Hi and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today we are going to talk about what I like to do when I don't know what to do. <laughs> now that might sound weird but um, I've been kind of teaching myself to draw for I think three years now and uh, especially in the beginning when I didn't really have my routine in I would just get all of my stuff together, get my sketchbook or my journal or and all my things and I would just sit there and with a blank page and just my, my mind just went completely blank. And so now, since starting my art journal in April, um, I've developed a routine to, do, to um, kind of get out of that blank space mind thing. Um, so I just thought I would show you and talk to you a bit about some of the things that I like to do when I don't know what to do. So that I don't have to sit there and be like, oh, I really want to create and then not be able to create. So I have my sketchbook here because I thought I would show you some examples. I have some watercolor paper because watercolor, pa watercolor is my preferred medium. I have my paints here and I just have my box of different things there. There's some Posca pens and pens and you know fun things. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is probably my most used technique. I'm, again, I'm so sorry about this light. I can't really do anything about it because my apartment is about this big and this is like the only table that I have besides my dining table but that is all of my pots and pans on it because I used my oven yesterday and my um, and I haven't been able to put it back yet because my oven is still hot from using it making lunch this morning because I store my pots and pans in my oven because I have no kitchen space. So, you know, anyway, um, life in a small apartment. Um, I have my water here and I like to do wet on wet for this. I've noticed, I'm just gonna blob down some water here to show you. I'm using a really cheap, really, really bad. I'm not saying that cheap paper is necessarily bad, but this paper is really really bad. So I hope that you can see it. I didn't want to use my like fancy watercolor paper for this. Um, okay, that's enough I think. I'm just blobbing down some water there and then I'm going to wet my paints. Um, I'm just going to do my usual um, color palette here which is yellow and orange and I'm picking up my favorite yellow which I never remember which one and I'm going to zoom in actually. Hold on. Um, when you do water and water techniques, um, or wet and wet techniques, I'm sorry, um, the, you're gonna, do you see that? You just blob the paint down and it just kind of spreads all, all over the paper, which I think is super cool. So you're just gonna let, gonna let the paint kind of do its own thing. I also love doing this technique for blending, so I'm just gonna pick up, I think this is cadmium yellow. No, can be red, hue, pale hue, or something like that. I'm just gonna blob it down first, and then maybe mix, mix it around to create this beautiful blend between colors, like this. Oh, that's beautiful. And this technique I found. Yeah, this is so simple and easy. And I found that this technique really just takes the pressure off, because. Um, it's abstract, so you're literally just blobbing down paint and then you're done. I'm just going to put that there. Um, so that's it, that's basically the first technique. Sometimes I do this and sometimes I do a wet on dry technique. So I'm just going to pick up some paint so you can see the difference. And I'm just, I'm really going with my intuition here. Um, that's how I journal and do art. Anyway, I'm just mixing. I'm just adding water to mix and the paints together and I'm just blobbing down the paint wherever I feel like I want it. So this is also super simple. You can get you can get more control with this technique. Am I frame? I hope so. Um, this one this wet and wet technique is more blowing down paint and letting paint do something. This one you definitely have more control over it. Um, but I think they're both just as fun. Um, if you want, if you like the more block, like blocked out shape look thing, which I like sometimes, sometimes I like this, sometimes I like this. It completely, completely depends on what I'm feeling that day. Um, 
I totally forgot my, what I was thinking about there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm just playing, really. And during this, um, both of these techniques, just blobbing down color or creating washes, I think just really loosens up everything. It gets me not nervous about putting paint down. You can do different layers, that's a really cool effect. Um, you just let it dry and then put on several layers. Um, this makes me not nervous about creating on a page because when you put something down on the page, you can mess up. Basically. You can mess up art because art can also be fixed, but you can't go wrong. Like, I can do this and just, okay, I'm done. This looks beautiful. Or I can do um, a face on top or just right on top or do anything that I want. So that's really the first thing. And it's so simple and so easy. It makes me so happy to just see the paint kind of do its own thing. Um, the next thing that I have written down on my list here, so I would remember everything that I wanted to talk about, is characters. For me this, this step is characters, but basically it's something you've done before. It's something you've done a million times and can do in your sleep. Um, because when you're like scared about putting paint down and you're not sure what you want to do, but you still want to create and make art, you should have like a go-to, I think. Because I think that makes life so much easier. And so I'm just gonna plop down. Like again, this is super loose and easy and I'm just making a couple of faces here. Um, or it's not even faces, like egg-ish shapes. And I'm gonna use some wet and wet techniques and just suggest where the mouth is going to be, like this. And I'm gonna get a bit darker for the way that I can be. Like this. And again, I'm just letting the paint do its own thing. All of these things are quick, easy, fun, and can't be done wrong. And I think that's really the goal of figuring out what you wanna do when you don't know what you wanna do. So I'm gonna set these aside and we're gonna come back to the faces later. And we're gonna go into the next thing. So basically what I was doing with the character is something that I've done a million times before. I have done so many characters in these past two months. I have lost count. They are everywhere in my journals and in my sketchbooks. And I have, um, here you can see washes by the way. You've seen this page before. I'm gonna zoom out a bit so you can see. Like that, and don't let your brush rest in water, but shh, don't tell. Um, here, this is the very first page that I, or spread that I worked on in my journal, and I did my safe journaling. I did yellow and orange, wet on wet, and just spreading around the color, and I absolutely love this spread. And then I just put a picture down here. Um, I love it, it's so simple, it gets away of this fear of the blank page and it just made me want to create. This one, blue and pink, again, combo that I love and is totally recurring in my uh, in my books. And here's a, here's a face or figure. Um, I have another one. Here I have a person, you can't see that, hold on. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Um, here we go, two different people. I love to do these flower girls. Um, hopefully you can see that. And just doing abstract hair. I'm doing all kinds of things. And do you have anything else? Like this, you see here. It's all just watercolor, just blobbing down. Here, same thing. Character, watercolor blobbing. Here, this is beautiful. I haven't journaled on this yet because I love the way it looks. But I will, I promise. Um, this is more of a block technique that I did um, instead of the super wet on wet. But I mean, it's all gonna melt together and it's gonna look beautiful no matter how you are journaling. Here again, blobbing down paint. That's such a go to for me. Um, so, yeah, do something that you've done before that you can do in your sleep basically and do some, do some washes because that's gonna get rid of the fear of the blank page. Okay, I think that's in focus. Next up, we're gonna do leaves because I 
I'm a firm believer of a lot of things, but I also believe that leaves can be done in literally any shape. I think it's fun also to do abstract shapes and just try to turn them into things. I'm just using sap green and viridian here to um, create, suggest shapes. I'm not like, if you the camera focus, this, these shapes don't look like leaves unless you know that they're supposed to be leaves. Which is totally fine and that's fine too. I'm just gonna really just do whatever. I'm just gonna blob. I'm not using a lot of water here and I'm not trying to blend either. God, I love sap green. Okay, like this. I'm literally just fall. You can't see that. Sorry, I did that one. Um, I'm just following my gut here. So I think I've done plenty here. You can even do another one like this. Oh my god, I can't stop. This is so much fun. <laughs> I feel like a kid in art class again. Um, okay, I'm actually running out of space on my paper here. Um, I'm just gonna do kind of a C shape down here, which you can't see. Hold on. I'm gonna move. My table is so tiny. Um, gotta do some rearranging. I'm just gonna do like a bean shape here. Okay, there we go. Boom! There we go. Leaf ish shapes. And this is actually pretty cool now. I do kind of bother, it just does kind of bother me that it's the only one that's not green, but whatever, we're gonna work with that. I'm actually gonna let this dry and come back to the first thing that we did. I'm gonna turn these into leaves and super cool things later, but first they need to be completely dry. Now the faces have almost, nope, not that one. <laughs> that one was still wet. This one is dry though. Also, if you don't want to be touching your paint, you probably shouldn't touch your paint straight on with your finger like this. And a good tip that I once heard was if the paper feels cold on the back, so over here, if it feels cold, it's still wet. Also, you can touch, if you think, I think this is dry now because it looks dry, but I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna gently put my finger on it like this. And I'm gonna be a little bit more careful than I was with the faces. Um, it does feel cold, so it's not completely dry yet. So I'm actually going to wait for this to dry and then I'm going to be right back. So um, while I were waiting for these to dry, I have been thinking a bit about what I said. And I always get so stressed out because I'm scared that I'm going to run out of battery or um, place my memory card or anything. I just need to learn how to chill. But I will, I promise. Um, you know, practice makes perfect and everything. Um, anyway, I was also thinking about characters and something you've done, doing something that you've done before. And sometimes, I just like to kind of clarify that, sometimes I do these abstract faces and sometimes I do like the sketching. But I think doing something in loose, which is kind of the theme about all of these steps, are, um, that's just so much easier to get, get away of the fear. But if you want to do something more complex, do it. This is just what I like to do. Sometimes I do do more complex things. Sometimes I just have a fine, li fine liner. This is the um, Statler pigment liner, as probably everyone knows because I love this thing. Um, sometimes I do just do line work and I'm just going around the page in, in circles, basically. Just warming up and just kind of letting, letting my brain just... <sighs> kind of like taking a deep breath for your brain. <laughs> so anyway, um, I don't know what I'm saying, I'm sorry. Um, these are dry now. I think this this one might need just a few more seconds. I'm actually gonna start with the one, I'm gonna start with the one, This. I'm gonna start with this one in the middle here because I'm already seeing a face here. I'm seeing eye, eye, nose, mouth. And the beautiful thing about these characters I, are that they're not going to look good, okay? But I love that. I love that sketching, uh, sketching look and that outside of the lines, outside of the box look. Um, I have my Posca pens here, um, kind of chilling in the corner because I want to do... I'm actually going to turn this so I can get a better angle. Um, because I do want to give them hair and, you know, 
stuff. <laughs> I, I want to give them hair and just fish features and everything. Just turn them into actual characters. So I'm just going to start. I have no idea. I'm just seeing this darker area here. And I'm like, hey, that would be a good eye. And typically when I start with the bottom part of the eye, I make them closed. And I don't... I wonder if I can zoom in a bit more. Nope. Sorry. Um, typically when I start with the bottom of the eye, I make the eye closed. I don't know why I did it closed now, but I'm actually going to do this one open. Um, because I actually wanted them to be open. But okay, I'm just going to do a half circle almond shape thing. Another line. And then the pupil. And that is going to be black. So it's Like, there's so few steps to this, but you just have to suggest the shape of the thing that you're doing. I think that's the most important part about getting rid of this kind of art block, fear of the blank page thing. And I'm gonna do nose. And since this red area was meant to be the lips, but like over here, um, I kind of thinking a small nose up here, which is gonna look a bit funny, but that's just how it's going to be. And I'm just quickly going to do this kind of nose. I have no idea why. Again, gut feeling, instinct, whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, so I'm seeing a lip here. This is so not how I draw mouths. <laughs> oh god. I think I just forgot how to draw. Anyway, she's going to be cranky. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then I'm just going to do a circle, a massive, massive circle for the cheeks. I actually like to do this kind of holding my pen out here to get these super messy lines like this. That's actually too big. But you know what? Since it's so abstract, that's totally fine. And I'm not going to outline the face, I think. I'm just going to give her a bit of a neck like this. And it's going to be very tall. <laughs> and then hair, I don't know. I'm going to hold on with hair for now. Um, I'm going to give her some eyebrows. Again, abstract, suggesting things. Just having fun, finding what feels good. Um, kind of. I'm feeling like she would have bangs. So... I was like, ooh, hold on, I'm gonna wait to do the hair. <laughs> nope, just kidding. <laughs> okay, cool. That's gonna be the hair. And I want blue hair because that's my go-to. And this is all about you and your go-to. I don't know how Posca pens react on watercolor paper, but um, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> so I'm just going to be super messy with this because I want it to be quick and loose and fun and not think too much about it. Like that. So while I do this, I'm actually going to talk about something that's super exciting and I hate when people say like, Oh, it's super exciting news, but this is actually super exciting. So if you don't know, I live in Sweden. Um, I have also lived in Washington DC previously. Um, I went to college there for, there for a year and I absolutely love that place. They have beautiful museums. And now I'm back in Sweden and I have been for about two, two years, yeah. And on, I live in a small town by the way, we have like one no, two museums, but they're like never open. And at the moment we're actually doing a um, an exhibit out on the streets, which is super cool. I was, um, I mentioned this in my last video, I did the guidebook for them. I actually have it under here. Hold on, I'm gonna show you. So 
um, every other year we have this art event called Open Art and it is um, basically bringing art out on the streets. So it's street art everywhere. It's um, graffiti, it's sculptures, paintings, video art, everything that you can think of and it's absolutely incredible. I helped design the, uh, the guidebook this year. It's kind of a um, index of the artist with information but also something that you can read at home. Uh, with interviews and background stories and it's a lot of fun and it was hard work but it was so much fun. So that kind of happens every other year but other than that the city is pretty dead when it comes to art, um, unfortunately. But um, me and my dad, I love to go to museums by the way. It's not really something that we've done a lot as a family growing up but I've always loved it. and. Um, so on Tuesday, so this video is going up on Monday, on Tuesday we are going to go to Stockholm, just me and my dad for the day and we're gonna go to a museum, we're gonna go to the Modern Art Museum and see Adi Matisse, we're gonna see Picasso, uh, Andy Warhol, um, gonna see some Swedish artists, it's gonna be so short, I'm so excited! <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely gonna get my art fix done for it. I guess a year or something the next time I go to Stockholm but I'm just so excited. I'm gonna do another nose here. Just suggesting the shape of the eye or the eye socket I guess. Like this and an eyelid and an eye. And I'm going to have this person kind of looking to the side like this. Just doing super quick things like this, I think can totally help just make your day better. <laughs> okay, cool. I actually really like how this looks now. I had no plan when I was starting this. I was like, hey, here's gonna be a mouth. This is probably a neck. Sometimes you can turn it upside down and it looks so much cooler. <laughs> so I mean, just do whatever you want to do. I'm gonna do a half circle here because I feel like a cheek. She, she has a face turned. I never do profiles like this, but or side profiles like this. But I'm gonna do like that, sketchy, 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 and then uh, now I'm gonna try to remember how I do mouths. Okay. See, way better. <laughs> I'm just gonna do an ear here. And again, this is a C, this is not an ear, but it looks like an ear because context, which I think is super cool. I actually kind of like her being bald like this. So, maybe this should, shouldn't be her neck, by the way, maybe this should be her chin. Hmm. Just kind of like this. Yeah, that looks cool. And for the next one, I think I'm just going to do a voiceover. Uh, so you can probably see this in the video that when I want to do things loose I hold my pen really far up because holding it down by the base like this if you're going to have so much you're going to have too much control over the pen 
or pencil. So whenever I'm sketching or just want it to be messy in a good way, because I like that messy look, like I said, I always hold it up. So I'm barely touching it. I mean, I could, I could do this with like two fingers like this and it would probably look really cool. If I wanted a super shaky look. Now I want a little bit of stability, so I'm just resting it on my knuckle here. Like this. But sometimes I don't even like rest my hand against the paper or the table or anything and I love that look. So I don't know. And also again, I have no idea where I'm going with this, as usual. But it's just it's just really cool, I think what happens when you just let your mind kind of take over. Like that. Maybe I should put hair on her, by the way. I don't know what kind of hair though. <laughs> I'm just gonna block some hair up like this. Not sure why. And it doesn't look very good, but that's okay. And I'm going to give her a ponytail. Now, I don't care that these like intersect with each other because I don't care. I think that's fun. And I do plan on cutting these out later, but I don't mind that this pink went into her blue hair. I'm totally fine with that. It's all loose and fun and easy and just making sure that I remind myself that I, hey, I can do art. This was so much fun to do. And I think they turned out pretty cool. They're not masterpieces, but I like them. They all have characters. And I did not see that this was going to be the result when I started just blobbing down the paint. So this is why I like this exercise so much. And yeah, anyway, this is the result of the first one. I'm gonna cut this out, use them in my journal. Um, totally love it. Now I'm all, ooh, hey, I can do this. <laughs> so moving on, this is cool, yes. Success. So I just want to show you what I do with the washes sometimes. I like to do borders. That's like one fun thing to do. I like to do the Courtney border. Again, I'm holding the pen super far up or away from the point. And I'm just going to do, I'm not, I don't, my arm has no support right now. I'm just literally moving from my shoulder. And I'm just pressing very, very lightly also creating a frame. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I do one line, that looks really cool. Sometimes I do a lot of lines, that looks really cool. Sometimes I do um, Courtney's kind of signature striped borders like this, which I love the look of. And I think, personally, I think the messier, the better when it comes to these things, but you know, you do you. Stripes, lots of lines. Love this. Okay, like this. Just play around with it. Like, whoosh. Okay, boom, done. That looks awesome. This is what I love about art. Sometimes I just paint or draw on top of it. Sometimes I just write, that's all I do. Sometimes I do, let's see, basic shape like this. I'm just gonna do some leaves here again. Totally not thinking at all about the shapes. This is what happened. I could do... Actually, I'm just gonna do some line work here and I'm gonna show you when it's done because this is probably gonna take a while and it's super fun, but no one wants to hear me talk for like half an hour, but nothing, so see you in a bit. So sometimes I don't do this, sometimes I do, um, sometimes I go over it with more layers and watercolors. I kind of like when it, the base layer peeks through. Again, I'm being super messy with this, I have no intention of staying within the lines, I have no intention of only doing it within the lines, I have no intention of not doing it within the lines, so I'm just blobbing. That's like my favorite thing to do, ever. I don't know if I'm an artist, but I'm definitely a blobber. 
Oh god. Could you imagine seeing that on like a... Um, what they call business card? <laughs> be so fun um so you can totally do different layers here i'm loving this orange up here like this oh maybe we can turn that into a flower okay cool like this and now i have to wait for the day okay that would not that was not very planned but you get the point sometimes i do turn them into artworks use them in backgrounds sometimes i do other things on top sometimes i don't do anything with them sometimes i do border you get the point but the most important thing is giving me a foundation to continue to do art. Because when you start, it's kind of like, oh, what's that metaphor? It's not digging a hole, it's something else. Um, it's like a domino effect. I think that's the metaphor I'm thinking about. Um, when you start, it just kind of keeps going and keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. It's like an avalanche. I think that might be the one, actually. Never mind. Um, so just, anyway, when you start doing art, start with the easy things and then like your ideas will come so here we go idea number two <laughs> let's go check on the leaves which hopefully are dry now because i just realized that i put the faces paper over the leaves but whatever so i'm actually seeing a lot of avocados here anyway um this is kind of just do a shape and see what you can do with it. So I like to do leaves. That's like my go-to thing. I don't know a lot about leaves. I don't know a lot about flowers. I have no idea what they're called. No idea what they look like. But I just do things. <laughs> and then boom, they turn into leaves, basically. So I'm going to start with this. Actually, I'm going to start with this one. Um, this one, sorry. I just read this book. I pointed it to. Um, and yeah, okay, that's dry-ish. This one's slightly not dry, but I think the rest of them are dry. Um, I'm just gonna do this again. Very loose. Boop. And stem like this. And then this already kind of looks like it. I love when it goes outside of the lines, by the way. I just love that effect. I don't know why. But I do. Now you can go super detailed with this line work. You can do no line work other than what you've done already. Um, just find what feels good. I'm gonna go all yoga with Adriana on you because I love that girl. Um, when I do line work and just exercises in general or art in gener general for that matter, I don't think. It's kind of like shutting my brain off for a second and it's so nice. That's what I love about it. So I like this. I could just keep it like this or I can do, um, I could just keep going. You can do other lines, you can do patterns, you can do patterns within each of the stripes, you can color them in, you can do whatever the heck you want to do. And you don't have to do straight lines, you can do um, more swooping lines. I'm just going to do Ooh, look at that leaf shape. Sure. Boom. Um, you know, I really like the look of just lifting the pen off the paper so it kind of tapers at the end and then just flicking it like this. I think this looks more realistic <laughs> than this, obviously, but it's all just fun things to do. You don't even have to do patterns on this, okay? move over to this one and also you can tell that I'm not thinking I'm not being careful I'm just having fun let's do this this is probably the only one that looks like a leaf from the beginning boom stem like that maybe you should need the stems when I was doing the green because <laughs> this looks really funny um I think I'm actually just gonna keep it like that because I like it um this one hmm actually this one first. Hold on, I have to move my things again. Hopefully my box won't fall because it's filled with journal things. This one kind of looks like the stem would be over here I think. Kind of like a falling leaf. Um, I like bean shapes. I like the buds. And we're going to do that and you can also do kind of like that, that was actually looks really bad because I used the wrong name for that, but oh well. I mean, you can do whatever the heck you want to do. That's like my model of life. If it feels good, you should do it. 
basically I'm just using some sketchy lines to make this look sketchier because I didn't really like it. And add some shading like that. And then with this fall leaf thing over here, um, I think we could turn this into kind of like a maple leaf but backwards. I don't know. I know there are leaves looks like this. Oh, there are leaves that look, look like this. You know what I mean. I'm just gonna do a group like this, stern, and then, because I'm liking the shapes that are going on over here, so I'm just gonna boop, kind of follow these, not really follow. Yay! See? Figuring it out. <laughs> and then over here, you don't even have, you don't just have to make one leaf. You could turn, totally turn this into like a plant or something. Um, Let's, let's flip it. Sometimes to see things you just have to flip it around. So, I'm kind of seeing these shapes. And also I love the patterns, like mixing the patterns in different layers. I don't know because I spent way too much time in Photoshop lately, <laughs> but this looks like two belts. This is like, that's all you need. Gosh. Okay, this one. I think the stem should be over here, and then sometimes you don't even have to do more than that. That kind of looks like a banana leaf. So I'm just gonna boop. Bam, it's a leaf. This one looks like an avocado to me. I'm just gonna turn it into an avocado. <laughs> so it's professional, but also this is fun. I think I have quite a lot of imagination, which maybe you can tell. I don't know. Um, and also, I think this is a great. Um, exercise and just uh, kind of letting your imagination go bananas. And also I love avocados. I'm just gonna boom, boom. That is the avocado core thing. I'm just gonna add some brown to that. Like this, kind of. Like do you see how easy this is and fun? Boom! Used to be a leaf, now it's an avocado. <laughs> so anyway, I think I've done plenty of leaves now. Um, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. So this is what we got in leaf front. I don't know if that's a word. So, I know this video has been a bit all over the place. This is things that I come up with. Um, I have washes, first thing I talked about. So much fun, great for backgrounds. Do it. <laughs> Don't really have much to say, more to say about that. My faces, I love these. I'm going to use them in my journal today because they make me so happy. And then I have the leaves. Also awesome things. And also, another great thing about these exercises is A, the quick, B, the fun, and C, you get things that you can use in your journals or sketchbook or whatever it is that you do and that you work with. So, this is it. Thank you so much for watching this kind of messy video. Um, I just want to also want to say thank you for all the views lately. I'm so excited every time I post a video. I keep refreshing it. I know you shouldn't obsess with it, but I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos, even though I'm totally all over the place. I hope that I can share the enthusiasm and the love that I feel for art and how happy it has made me and how good I'm feeling when I'm creating art. So. I'm not going to ramble on any further because I have a feeling this video is going to be really, really, really long. Um, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next week. And, you know, I'm going to talk to you a bit about the museum, I think, next week. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Yay! Okay, so look forward to that. Have a great day and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye!